right after <laughs> something else. <laughs> Alright, Okay, we hope you enjoyed that engineering physics video, and we are going to have a Q&A in a second here. So uh, also be aware that the physics video has gone live, uh, live, has been uploaded to YouTube. Uh, so if you want to watch it uh, again immediately after seeing it here, you can do so. It's on YouTube. All right, let's, uh, let's adjust our cam here. Okay, let's go down just a little bit. Down just a little more. Okay, yay, go ahead. You guys are good. You guys are good. Actually, means you're live. Oh, you can right. start answering questions. Hooray! Okay. Hey, Yay, we're here. <laughs> we're gonna have a live physics demonstration. Yes. Oh wait, no Q and A. Sorry. So, uh, first thing I want to say, uh, you might notice the beard. I may have said something about to Nvidia. If they did this for us and they helped us make this all happen. I was going to dye my beard in video green. So uh, Mike Scalones in particular, um, you know, Pierre, Dillip, thanks for all the engineering work. Uh, Nathan, Chad, Liam, and of course, Jim Black, uh, you know, who I've known for years and years and years. Thank you very much. You are helping to make this game awesome. So, uh, awesome. yes, yeah. thanks guys. So, um, so questions. <laughs> so I, was saying, I pointed one out right before we started. Somebody was asking about collision and what will happen if you've got a vendor that's just surrounded by a billion guys buying things. Um, we're doing things like if you're not in combat, you won't collide with people of the same faction, might not collide with people of the same faction when you're in combat. We're doing things to prevent bad stuff like that. I, I think we can guarantee... Uh, you know, no out of combat collision with your own faction. Yeah, that, that is definitely a confirmed commitment. That just it, it opens a huge surface for griefing and bad things, and we're just gonna avoid it. What about teleport hacks? Uh, well, actually, let's watch this video again. Yeah. The the video we just streamed as soon as it hits YouTube. Watch it; you'll find out what happens. Didn't cover teleport teleporting, oh, we but didn't. you know, basically. Over a sufficiently long distance, we'd, we'd probably kick you. Um, but in general, you know, if you tried to teleport from one space to the other, the server sit, would say, well, he's trying to be over there. Maybe there was just a lag spike on his end, and the server would walk at your normal speed towards that position. So short teleport, that, short teleports, that's what would happen. Long teleports, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be more detrimental to you to, to do a teleport hack because you're you, you're not going to exactly know where your server position is, and people could be beating on you. You can't avoid that. How will Zerg fights go? Wouldn't it be hard with collision? Well, we've got like two millennia of Zerg fights uh, in human history, and it's gone pretty awesomely. So <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to develop your own new tactics. You can't just create a big ball. Sorry. Yeah, you, you, you will not be able to pack everyone in quite as tightly, um, you know, which is... And there's gameplay there. Yeah. Right. You're actually going to have to do formations and organize, organize your, your, your realm. It's going to be, you know, organization is going to be very important in this type of setting. Uh, the, uh, the MMO nerds are going to have to learn some uh, American football and rugby. That's what it comes <laughs> down to. But these tactics will matter. Right. All right. I, I will go on the record and say that I honestly think... Uh, NFL football, from the coaching point of view, is probably one of the best uh, turn-based uh, tactical combat games out there. <laughs> like, you know, it, it is up right up there with Warhammer Tabletop. You know, it's it, it's more complicated because all the pieces on your side move at once. Right. Uh, Deadbolt asked about how physics will work with projectiles and homing and auto-hitting things, and I think I'll let Brian and Rob take this one. Go ahead. Uh, well, obviously, we can't just have a projectile fire and then leave it at that. Um, if for no other reason, just lag would make that impossible to hit anything. 
So there will be most likely some amount of an attractor on it to make it attractor to the target to make it at least feel good. Um, as far as truly homing projectiles, that's more of a design decision than a physics decision. I mean, yeah, we, we, we could have fire and forget projectiles, we can have homing projectiles. The physics simulation allows us to have a wide variety. It's really going to be up to design, what feels good for the designers, what feels good to the players. Feedback is going to be incredibly important, obviously. So, you know, it, the, our, our backers, you know, getting in there and playing with that. Um, yeah, Rob could have projectiles. I'm working on the magic system, as I've commented a couple times in chat and on the forums. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're kind of trucking along on that. We've, we're, we're trying to get a basic system in there. We, you know, we're already in the uh, um, internal test, you know, people were able to throw projectiles at each other. You know, they're just swords right now that have no gameplay effect. But, you know, we're working on, you know, you can th throw things directly, you can throw things in an arc. Uh, you know, projectiles, you know, again, the physics system allows us a lot of latitude. And it's really going to depend on, you know, design and feedback of what, how, how it actually works in the game. I, I paused it because I saw a bunch of good questions go by. Um, using the physics engine, does that mean a projectile with a uh, from a siege engine with a large enough mass will squash or one shot a flare? Um, yes. Yeah, we want yeah. weight and mass, momentum, yes. all of that to matter. Um, to what degree it matters, I don't know if we've decided that yet. But you know, bigger guys are going to push around smaller guys. So if you want to be a Luchapan tank, you can wear the heavy armor and be really durable, but you're still going to weigh as much as a Luchapan. And if a big giant slams into you, that weight's going to be relevant. Yeah. Um, so uh, from Jamas, this system will be very sensitive to desync, don't you think? Uh, so if you've uh, been playing in our internal test server for the last uh, six weeks or so, you've definitely seen uh, some desync problems. And you know, if you were on hatchery this morning, I think we've got it all going pretty good. Um, so uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, that's not all made it over to Wormling yet. So the thing that you're going to be seeing for uh, Alpha today, you know. Alpha tester, not an actual alpha, but the thing we're going to let alpha testers in on is that's uh, that doesn't have all the anti-sync stuff. But you know, like I said, if you've been in IT, you've been seeing us work through those issues, and hopefully, you think it's pretty good now, and we're going to continue to work on it. But we're in a good place. Um, last question that I wanted to answer from there. Um, you know, isn't this going to affect latency? What about load on the server again? Thanks, NVIDIA. <laughs> yeah, the guys at NVIDIA are working really hard with us to make that not a problem, and they're doing an awesome job of it. Yeah, we're, I, the goal, I think, for the goal certainly for us is to raise the bar on like mass large scale physics. And you know, if we also turn into a great demo for them, that, you know, right. that's bonus. <laughs> Beneficial, everybody wins, yeah. So, and, uh, you know, we're, we're very experienced MMO developers here. You know, obviously, we know the problems of latency. You know, we're trying this kind of new audacious thing, doing server-side uh, uh, simulation. You saw in Andrew's little video there, you know, this helps stop cheating. You know, as I talked about in the video, that's incredibly important in a PvP game. We don't want cheaters, and we're very aware of, you know, desync issues and latency issues. You know, this is a high priority in our mind, but, you know, we're pretty confident we're going to be able to lick this. Um, is there a hitbox that is different between races? Uh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Mark has laid it down in the foundational principles, choices matter. There will be trade-offs. Bigger guys will be easier to hit. And smaller guys will fit through smaller holes. So, you know, if you want to build castles that are designed for little dudes, the little dudes can live there and the big dudes can knock them over. <laughs> yeah. Lubricant leaping is uh, going to be a sport for the larger players, I think. <laughs> no. um, and for, for those of you that haven't seen our videos all week, um, they're on YouTube. Go check out the video where Mark and Andrew talk with our friends over at NVIDIA in case you're worried about, you know, I don't have an NVIDIA card. Don't worry about that. We talk about it in the video. If that's a concern of yours, go check out the uh, interview with our friends. Uh, McCavity asks, what systems will be in place to prevent stuff like automatic ability triggers, texture modding to make enemies glow neon pink? Um, Watch uh, on YouTube, there are the videos about UI modding and the video about uh, our continuous patching process, and those are addressed really well in those, so please do check those out. Um. 
I get the kid weapon because it's safer for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we don't trust him. Well, we do trust him. We, we trust him to behave like Tim. We trust him with code, but not with weapons. Um, let's see. Uh, small characters being slower or faster just depends on the race. A lot of this stuff is going to be determined by design. Andrew, could, could you like... stack players to get to areas you wouldn't normally be able to get to? <laughs> <laughs> um, we may have done this. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we may possibly have built a pyramid here in the office. And you know what? That is, on a, to me, that's good gameplay. That is, you know, if a bunch of people can do a really great job of coordinating themselves to, you know, build a cheerleading pyramid of uh, Strim, you know, that's that's pretty awesome, honestly. That, like, you deserve to have, you know, you that's, it's the game. That is now, the game. There is a big asterisk on that. I don't know if we've decided if you will have same realm collision in combat. Right. So if you're out of combat, then no, you can't build a tower because you don't collide. Well, you can't build a tower out of your allies. Right. You have to get a little more creative. <laughs> <laughs> one point. <laughs> I can do more than one point. <laughs> um, with the anti-cheat, won't it still be possible for someone to walk through a wall and see enemy numbers? Um, you know, getting your client through a wall is, uh, you know, it is a legitimate possibility. That's where we get more into server packet optimizing to, uh, you know, not tell, not even tell your client about players you can't see. And that's an that's an ongoing project, but it's you know not part of what the physics is. Uh, will the server ultimately correct avatar position on the client in cheat situations? Uh, the server does send you a uh, you're out of bounds packet. I just, you know, when I made my super hack client, I also made it ignore those messages too. Um, you will, if you're playing on, you know, if you're playing on Hatchery, you will see some cases where if you make a jump that like just barely clears something, you might occasionally like feel like there's a little rubber band snapping you back. And that's if the client and the server disagree on your position, then there will be some work to sync those back up. Um, but again, you know, obviously a hacked client is just going to ignore that. And we assume that you are going to hack your client because, you know, we cannot control what's on your computer and we know you guys experience. Of, we know you. Yeah. Experience of <laughs> making videos. <laughs> Andrew and Bryce aren't the only ones that have walked the dark path. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. will, yeah. Will there be corpse collision? Not right now. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. we might have discussed like climbing over a pile of corpses sounds pretty awesome, but there is physics involved there and yeah. CPU cost and but right now there isn't. Right. Um, there is a you know there is an interesting kind of possibility there for you know, a, you know like collision with players of the opposing realm and their corpses maybe or you know it, again we we talked about having uh, you know. Guy drops his sword, and then a uh, fireball launches the sword. And you know, I'm not sure how hard we're going to push the M rating, and uh, you know, if you can actually get damaged by flying jibs. <laughs> Is there collision detection on caravans? That's probably a pretty safe bet. Will you be able to block them? I think it probably depends on how much they weigh and how much you weigh. How are you dealing with getting stuck on and dying to geometry? Um, Discovering face no. seen it. How are you dealing with uh, getting stuck on and dying to geometry? We, um, you know, it was a big problem in Warhammer. Warhammer, uh, you know, I will say as the guy who was in charge of the client, and uh, you know, we can do better. That's part of the reason we went out and uh, got our physics from NVIDIA, because I just said, all right, like, here it is, it's good, drop it in. Um, Warhammer had uh, pretty much hacked together physics that, uh, you know, wasn't a real physics engine. And all the physics pretty much ran on the client, too, which was, uh, you know, it was a limitation of the computing power we had on servers at the time. And there's a lot more you can do with server computing power in 2015. Ezekiel has a question. Can we put guild mason catapults and send them over castle walls? Um, 
Now, well, the lawyers say that I can't actually suggest you get in a catapult and try this in real life, but you maybe run the simulation in your head and kind of figure out how that might work.